Okay, thank you. So I actually think that um, Rob's paper is a happy paper. It's not a sad paper because it shows us that managers react to incentives. That's not something trivial. Now we just have to go ahead and set the incentives right and we'll get uh, good results. And I'm going to speak today about entire uh, judicial I'm going to do a reassessment of judicial review of controlling shareholders' transactions. Surprise, surprise. I actually didn't know that five people are going to speak about the same topic before me. Uh, well, I, will, I will flip the slides uh, uh, quickly. Uh, it's, of course, it's a joint, that's the most important part. It's a joint work with uh, Asaf Hamdani and Alon Claire. Uh, there are two sides uh, to the equation here. On the one side, we have the most severe agency problem that exists in this uh, self-dealing controlling shareholder transaction. So we really need uh, court intervention in order to uh, protect the minority. But on the other side, it's, uh, well, it's disappointing, but courts are not better, no better than markets in, uh, in evaluating transactions and their fair terms, fair price. And uh, this is, of course, an understatement. It's a major difficulty for the court. What could be a possible solution? And Delaware, as we heard, experimented with it for a long time. We could try to set judicial review standards so as to minimize actual judicial review of terms and prices of actual deals, but nevertheless impose norms on companies to motivate them to uh, uh, make an effective internal process that would improve, uh, improve the outcome. Altogether, the aim is on the one side to prevent opportunism, which means that the controlling shareholder would be careful uh, if she wants to push forward a harmful transaction. And on the other hand, we want to prevent uh, chilling. So if there is a good transaction, a beneficial transaction for the company, we don't want to, to scare it away just because it's a transaction with the controlling shareholder. Uh, what about the Delaware experience? That's the big question of, 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 uh, of the paper. Uh, we think it can guide us, but there are major differences between the US market and the Delaware market, or the, U or the US and the Israeli market. We should consider it. And now, this is my personal view, not the view necessarily of the co -authors. I think that the Israeli market is not ready yet for a full-pledged MFW. So maybe we need something like a MFW light. That's the end of the lecture, but still I have some more slides, so let's go for it. What is the Israeli system? So the Israeli system... Okay. So what is the Israeli system? The Israeli system is a mandatory three-tier approval mechanism. We need the approval of an audit committee comprised of uh, independent uh, directors. And, uh, well, independent Israeli directors are somewhat different institutions than the uh, U.S. equivalent. I will not dwell on that. And the approval of the board of directors, which if you get the approval of the audit committee, you would certainly get the approval of the board of directors. And then you need to go to the uh, uh, general meeting of the shareholders, and there you need to receive uh, a majority of the minority, a majority of the disinterested shareholders. Just until lately, it was not really a majority requirement, but, but a one-third approval vote of the disinterested shareholders. But today we have uh, a majority of minority, which is a mandatory requirement. Uh, there is also a substantive requirement. The transaction does not only have to uh, fulfill this three-tier approval mechanism, it also need uh, not to run against the benefit of the company, and this year's uh, corporate code was uh, amended, and now it says that the transaction must be for the benefit of the company. What are the poss possible approaches for uh, um, court assessment? Mm, formal approach is that uh, the only role that the court has is to make sure that the three-tier approval was actually granted. And if it was granted, uh, that's, I that's basically it. We don't have many court rulings uh, of that kind, but have one or two when such cases were brought to court, and that's what the court answered, and that's perhaps why we didn't have many, many, uh, many claims. Second possibility is an entire fairness review for each transaction. So on a case-by-case -case basis, the court would somehow try to make sure that the terms are fair, and if not, set them correctly. And there is an intermediate approach, the Hamdani Hannes paper of 2008, advocated a somewhat similar approach to Delaware, uh, saying, well, if you use this market imitating um, process within the firm, 
you would get some procedural advantages in court in order to encourage firms to use those uh, measures. And if you want someone to blame uh, for the broad usage of uh, special committees in Israel, so blame Asaf, because uh, the court in Mahdeshim Agan uh, accepted, accepted, uh, uh, accepted this view. What are the recent uh, developments? So we had Amendment 16 to the Corporate Code, and that's the, uh, there are certain important uh, changes. I think you should uh, blame uh, Zohar for this amendment. But uh, uh, So now we really have this majority of minority requirement. The Audit Committee is now really disinterested, or somewhat in disinterested. It used to be that on the Audit Committee, there would see it. there would be no uh, insiders, so-called, but you would see there normally employees of the controlling shareholders. So they would consider fair members of the audit committee. Now that uh, that's impossible. Uh, there is also uh, Amendment 22 of the code uh, uh, taking effect uh, this year, and it says that the audit committee must design some sort of a competitive process or an alternative process to make sure that the transaction is for the benefit. This conflict, this self-dealing transaction is for the benefit of the company. What happened in, in the court system? So first of all, we have this uh, development of the economic court or economic division uh, based on the Delaware model in the... Uh, in the um, uh, district Court in Tel Aviv, and it issued the Mahdashim uh, decision, which uh, adopted the, the view of entire fairness and procedural uh, uh, safe harbor if you make some, some internal process within the, the company. And the Elsin decision in the Supreme Court also adopted the notion of entire fairness. Uh, we have another uh, development, important development from my point of view, uh, third-party proxy advisory firms, the equivalent of ISS and Glass-Lewis. We have uh, a, a, a major player, which is Entropy, and a small player, the major player is independent. A few years ago, uh, 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 this advisor was owned, uh, or, or another advisor was owned by uh, one of the large banks, uh, but today it's independent, it's, uh, it's considered powerful. What happens in practice? So following the Mahdashim Agan, uh, Agan decision, we see that actually every large self-dealing uh, um, transaction involving the controlling shareholders adopts the idea of, uh, um, of uh, a special uh, committee of disinterested directors that should assist the company in negotiating the transaction with the controlling shareholder. Uh, that was the, the only fancy feature of my lecture, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, what are we left with after the Mahdashim Agand case? As I said, it, it, it implemented the H&H &H, uh, uh, proposal, uh, but it leaves us with some major unanswered questions. And the reason is that we have no history of this institution of uh, special committees in Israel. We are not sure what they have to do. The directors are not sure what they have to do. So first of all, uh, after Mahdashim Agan, it's an open question which type of, of transactions justify this special and expensive process, what exactly is required from the special committee, and maybe most important, what are the procedural advantages of um, using this special committee? Uh, would it afford uh, the, the companies the business judgment protection? Is it a shift of burden? And those questions are far from trivial even to analyze because we in Israel, we don't have these links between judicial standards and the procedural stages in the litigation. Uh, a motion to dismiss in Israel is not exactly the same standard as a motion to dismiss uh, uh, in the US. We don't have um, a summary judgment stage. So it's going to be very hard to translate institutions that were born in a, in a different uh, setting. Well, I don't, you don't really need me to uh, remind you the, the Delaware approach. Uh, we know that it used to be an uh, entire fairness, and then you could shift, as we heard from Justice Holland, you can shift uh, the burden if you either imp uh, impose voluntarily uh, a majority of the minority or um, a special uh, committee procedure. And recently, we know that if you do both and you do that well, then uh, you get uh, a protection of the business judgment rule, possibly even uh, um, allowing you to uh, um, dismiss the case at uh, a very preliminary stage and before uh, real disclosure takes place. Can we import uh, the Delaware model? It's a, it's a big question. So as 
as we recall, the idea is to push the company to, uh, to adopt a procedure that it doesn't have to. And then you need to offer a sweetener. But in Israel, most of the procedures are already imposed by law. So the law doesn't have to provide any more sweeteners. Majority short of approval is a legal requirement. Audit committee approval is a legal requirement. It's, it's disinterest composition is a legal requirement. Another question is that, well, maybe in Israel you have less protection. Uh, for instance, in a, in a going private self-dealing merger, we don't have uh, an express appraisal uh, remedy in Israel. And also there is the difference in procedural laws that I told you. Um, we don't have some stages, or we don't use them as we do in the U.S. The Supreme Court tells us that the motion to dismiss is something that is a stage that would hardly be used in Israel, and if at all, it would be used for, for legal questions. It's not a matter of, if you have a factual dispute, it's not the time uh, to, to, to deal with it. But on the other hand, and we don't have a summary judgment at all, but what we do have, we have this approval of, uh, of a class or a derivative action, and at the approval stage, uh, the court first uh, hear testimonies and cross-examination of witnesses. So the court is quite knowledgeable at this stage. It could offer some uh, uh, disclosure that it decides is uh, uh, needed at this, this stage. And uh, it decides if uh, the decision is reasonably likely to, uh, uh, to be in the favor of the plaintiff and only then uh, will the court allow the class action or derivative action to dismiss, uh, to continue? So major differences between the, uh, uh, the two, uh, the two um, systems. What do we want to achieve? What do we want the companies, what do we want to push companies to do in Israel? And uh, that might be a reason to, uh, uh, to offer some sweeteners. Well, we actually want the, the special committee to do an effective job. And it means it uh, needs to have extensive powers, the power to say no, which is, as I told you is granted in law, but also we need them really to review alternatives, to try to negotiate, to, uh, uh, um, to use uh, independent and, and good advisors, legal advisors and financial advisors. We want the process to be uh, you know, a good process uh, to make sure that they receive the relevant information to enjoy conf confidentiality and uh, to negotiate. Oh. Let me jump to the last slide and then uh, leave room for many questions to come. So what do we propose? And we still did not uh, write it, so we think about it. But what we think we aim to uh, is, uh, well, the court, when they receive uh, such a suit uh, about uh, uh, a self-dealing controller uh, transaction, must make sure that there was a special committee that tried that really tried to imitate uh, Martin transaction with a third party with all the limitations that that should be ascertained, and then make sure that showed the approval was really disinterested and that there was full well there was a lot of disclosure in this environment because the idea is that a special committee could first improve the term of the deals. Or even if it does not improve the terms of the deal, it would uh, produce information that would assist informed shareholders to make the right choice. So uh, full disclosure is, is key here. And then if those preliminary terms are met, we think that, well, we are a bit cautious about that, but we think that normally a court that finds that all these preliminary uh, terms were fulfilled should not interfere in transactions based only on fair, uh, on price claims. And this is close to MFW in the sense that the court should evade questions that it's very hard for it to decide. But we do not think that the motion to dismiss stage is the right one. We think that the court should really make sure after, after broad disclosure that the special committee did its best to negotiate uh, uh, deal terms. And again, I'm not speaking now for, for my co-authors, but I personally know uh, many uh, directors in public companies, and I think they will do a better job if they know that in the second stage, you know, the court would back them and make sure that they did a good job. So we don't have the Delaware tradition of special committee negotiating an effective process, and at least in the coming years, I expect the court to be very rigid to make sure 
that this process was not, was not cosmetic compliance, but actually uh, was, uh, was meaningful and effective. But if that um, condition is met, we think that the, bo the court should not interfere with transactions based only on price co uh, concerns. Well, maybe never say never. If something is really obvious, you don't need to be a genius to understand that something went wrong uh, uh, with pricing. Maybe the court could intervene in, in, in these type of, of, of questions. So it's not off, off the board at all, but uh, it should not happen often if the process is extremely clean. And uh, what about disclosures? So we have uh, our friends from the ISA, the Israeli SEC. We think that just like in the US, you know, the Israeli uh, S Security Authority has to understand that special committees are important and to design uh, disclosures so that you know, the public and the ones that have to vote would know exactly what the special committee did. And well, co companies could do that voluntarily and should do that voluntarily, but we can say that about the entire uh, scope of security regulation. We think it should be mandated. And secondly, when it comes to court, the court should also carefully uh, uh, um, think what is the, re the, the disclosure scope that is necessary for the court in, in the next stage of the litigation to make sure that the um, uh, committee was effective and not to assume its uh, effectiveness. Questions? Thank you.